This video explains solubility. If something is soluble, what that means is that it will dissolve in water. And if it's soluble, you will write it in a chemical reaction as aqueous. You will put AQ in parentheses after that chemical formula. Insoluble simply means that the substance will not dissolve in water. It'll just settle to the bottom or float around inside of the liquid. But usually these are going to be solids for us because most of the things that we're going to deal with are ionic compounds. So usually you're going to put an S in parentheses after the substance if it will not dissolve in water. It, it is possible that you could have other things like liquids or gases, but for the most part you could expect to have a solid. Over here we have a list of substances that we're going to identify whether or not they're soluble in water. We're using the solubility rules on the reference table. This is the North Carolina reference table if you're curious. If you look at the solubility rules, all you're simply going to do is you're going to find the anion. It's not about the cation in each, um, in each formula. It's, it's all about the anions. So you have two columns here. You have the soluble column and you have the insoluble column. Everything's listed by the, the ending ingredient, like nitrates, acetates, okay, ammonium's an exception right off the bat, chlorides, bromides, iodides, fluorides, sulfates, um, all of those are anions that would be over here on the right-hand side. And then the insoluble, still listed by the anions, carbonates, phosphates, hydroxides, sulfides, and oxides. So our first example is sodium chloride. And I'll underline what it ends in. It ends in chlorine. Well, chlorine would be a chloride. So you come find that over here, and chlorides are listed right here. The way this works is it says all chlorides, bromides, and iodides are soluble. Except, it's chemistry, we've got to have some exceptions here. Silver, lead, and mercury one. What that means is that everything that has chlorine, bromine, and iodine at the end will be soluble in water unless it's silver chloride or silver bromide or lead chloride, etc. Sodium is not one of the exceptions, so that means it's going to be soluble in water. So in a chemical equation, after sodium chloride, we would put AQ in parentheses. It's going to be soluble. It will be aqueous. Lead chloride. Well, we were just on the chlorides, and lead was one of our exceptions. So that means that lead chloride will not dissolve in water. So it's an ionic compound. I know that because it's got a metal in the front of it, so we're going to put solid. It would be a solid in water. The next one is potassium nitrate. It ends in nitrate. If you're not sure, remember that you have a polyatomic ion table. You could look up the ions to see what it ends in. Nitrates are the very first thing listed, and it says all nitrates are soluble. There's absolutely no exceptions to that. So that means that it is going to be aqueous. Sodium nitrate. Well, same deal. It, sodium nitrate is it's all nitrates, so it's going to be aqueous as well. Sodium carbonate. Carbonates weren't over here. The carbonates are on the right-hand side. You get faster at this the more you do it. All carbonates and phosphates are insoluble. That means they won't dissolve in water unless they are combined with a group 1A element. Well, remember if you open up your periodic table, you can find group 1A, group 2A, etc. Sodium is a group 1A element, which may, means that instead of not dissolving, it actually will dissolve. So it will be aqueous. Then I chose aluminum carbonate, another carbonate. It, aluminum is not in group 1, so that means it will be a solid. It's an ionic compound. It's got a, a, a cation and an anion. Magnesium oxide. Oxides are over here on the insoluble side. All oxides are insoluble unless it's with a group 1. Well, magnesium is a group 2, so that means it'll be a solid. It will not dissolve. <coughs> then I have two sulfates. I have lithium sulfate and barium sulfate. Well, the sulfates are right here. <coughs> so it says that all sulfates are soluble unless they're with calcium, strontium, barium, that's one of mine right here, mercury, lead, two, or silver. Lithium wasn't mentioned, so it will be aqueous, and barium will be a solid. One more thing I want to mention is this group 1A salts thing. Um, a salt is basically anything that's made up, typically speaking, of a metal, like a metal cation and a halide. So if this is a group 1A salt, the halogens are called halogens because that means salt former. So if you had like NAF 
or if you had LICL, or if you had anything else that was a group 1A metal with a halogen, that would be fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, or acetine, then those would be, those would automatically be soluble. It doesn't list, um, it doesn't list some of those things. Well, I mean, it lists everything here as far as the chlorides, the bromides, and the iodides. Um, you have the fluorides listed down here, so in some ways it seems a little funny to, to put that up there, but that would still count as like a group 1A salt. 